So that geometric series, well, last time we looked at it, I think I had like an M minus one. It doesn't really matter. The key is we talked about you had a variable power. So it was some number raised to power. We see it in a lot of different forms. Uh, I think previously you had it up there with like A sub one, and now it's just an A, just referring to a number. What's making it geometric? Once again, this common ratio, this is the guy we're looking at, something like that. So convergence versus divergence. If I had the sum, as n goes from 5 to infinity, of 2 times 5 to the n, it diverges. I don't really care as far as convergence or divergence about anything else other than this r value. It doesn't matter where it starts. It could start at 5,000. It's still going to infinity, so there's an infinite number of terms. It's not going to change anything. I'm not worried about if there's a number here or not. As a matter of fact, there's always a number here because let's face it, if the two wasn't there, it's still a one. Right? It's not gonna change anything. It's that R value. If I saw the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of one third times seven six to the n, still diverges. Why? Greater than one, okay. Um, let's go sum as n goes from two to infinity, pi over e to the n. Also diverges. I don't have any clue what pi divided by e is, but I know it's bigger than one because pi is bigger than e. That's all I needed to know, okay. I can go on a calculator and get a decimal representation, but either way, I know it's bigger than one. Are you okay with that? Okay, so let's look at some that will converge here. We're going to get some different looks. Let's go n goes from 0 to infinity, 3 times 4 to the n over 5 to the n plus 1. Get a different look here. Now, what we want to make sure of is we can see what this R value is. So this will be one of those that we kind of need to rewrite. Okay. I'm not worried about the three. I'm worried about the values raised to the n power. So the first thing I'm going to do is split this one off. So this will be three, four to the n over five to the n times five. Or well, you can write five to the first. Are you okay with that? So now when I rewrite this sum, 0 to infinity, we're going to have 3 fifths times 4 fifths to the n. Since the 4 and the 5 are both to the n, I can pull that outside of the fraction. This 5 comes out, it's still on the bottom, so I get that 3 fifths. So this one will converge. I'm looking right at this R value. This is going to tell me that it's going to converge. That's less than one. So we'll converge to A sub one over one minus R. Four fifths is the R value. Then I go for my first term. So remember, first term is the first one in the sequence, wherever you're starting. So in this case, I'm starting with n equals 0. So first term is where I'm substituting 0 in this time. So what's 4 fifths to the 0? 1 times 3 fifths is just 3 fifths. So let's see, that would be, uh, what's that, 3 fifths over 1 fifth? So 3. Okay, there. All right. Let's go sum from zero to infinity. Three to the n plus two to the n over four to the n. 
I don't think the geometric's the easiest one to work with, but I think they're usually some of the easiest ones to recognize. I mean, you can see those n powers. You don't care if it's n plus one, minus one. That doesn't matter because you can split that off, but you see the n's, okay? I need to kind of rearrange this, but I can tell it's going to converge because I'm seeing a larger number on the bottom than I am on the top, and they're all to the n. So it's definitely going to give you a fraction or value less than one. So here's my split, zero to infinity, three-fourths to the n, plus zero to infinity, two-fourths, or you can reduce that to one-half if you wanted to, but both to the n. Are you okay there? Now, if either one of those parts diverge, then the whole thing diverges because you're adding it. Right? But I look at each one individually. They're both going to converge because they're both less than 1. Right? So they'll converge to that A1 over 1 minus R. So A sub 1 would be 1 because I'm starting at 0. So 3 fourths to the 0. 1 minus 3 fourths plus still a 1 there, 0 power. 1 minus 2 fourths, or 1 minus a half. So this one would be 1 over 1 fourth, which is 4, plus 1 over 2 fourths, which is 2, 6. Are you okay there? All right, so geometrics are first one. And just wanted to kind of review that one. I saw that one a little bit in the last class. Okay. We also have what we call partial sums. Now we're going to have a lot of different tests and ways to prove convergence and divergence, depending on what you're dealing with. Geometrics, the first one, now partial sums. If we're talking about a partial sum, so we have a sequence sum of, say, a sub n, a1 plus a2 plus a3 on down the line. Okay, just infinite number of terms there. Okay. Uh, so again, we're going to infinity. So this would mean that s sub 1 is a1, sum of the first, s sub 2, a1 plus a2, sum of the first two. Okay. S sub 3, a1 plus a2 plus a3, sum of the first three. Okay. And if you did S sub script 10, it's the sum of the first 10 terms, whatever you have there. Okay. So it's the partial sums. There's no way that we can add up an infinite amount of values, so we're trying to look at the smaller ones to see if we can find a pattern. That's the idea. Okay, so if S sub n converges then the sum of A sub n converges. So this remember, S is our partial sum. So if the partial sum converges then I know the overall infinite sum of the series converges. If S sub n diverges then the sum of a sub n diverges. So let's look at a couple here with some partial sums. And so here's my summation. So n goes from 1 to infinity, 1 over n, n plus 1. Now, the idea before when we just saw a geometric, this is obviously not a geometric. You're not seeing a number to an nth power. Okay, we're going to have some that can be, you can use a few different tests on, but you can tell when some can work and can't work. Right, so right now, these are the only two ideas you have for determining convergence or divergence, and there's no way this is going to work because there's no nth power. 
right? So you can recognize sum the more you get used to it. All right, so let's look at some partial sum. So my first term would be, in this case, substituting 1. It says starting at 1. Second term would be substituting 2, then 3, then 4, and so forth. Everybody agree with that? Mm -hmm. All right, so S sub 1 would be 1 half. If I substitute a 1 in, it just wants the first term. I get 1 over 1 times 2, 1 half. Everybody agree? Mm -hmm. right. Second, S sub 2, 1 half, because that was the first term, plus, now let me get the second one, be 1 over, and if I substitute 2 in, what do you get? 1 6. One, six. Right. So then I have a half plus a 6. Let's see, that's three, yeah, two thirds. Are you okay there? Let's look at the next one. Third. We a half plus a six plus, now when I substitute three in, one and twelfth. And if we add those up, and we know this was already two thirds, so it's really two thirds plus a twelfth. What does that give you? Three fourths. Three fourths. Do you see a pattern? What do you think the next sum is going to be? Four, fifth. Four, fifth. Four fifths. Then the one after that? Five six. Five, six. Okay, you, when you do partial sums, I'm not saying you'll always stop at three, but basically you're going to, you can find some kind of pattern if there is one. So maybe you have to go a couple more. Maybe you figure it out in three of them or two of them. You're just kind of seeing what's going on. Okay. But once we see the pattern, then I can write my S sub n in terms of n. So in this case, S sub n is n over n plus 1. The first one's 1 half. Second one's 2 thirds. Third one's 3 fourths. As you said, the fourth one would be 4 fifths on down the line. So now the question becomes this guy. I want to know if this sum converges at infinity or not. Because if this does, this does. If this doesn't, this doesn't. So let's investigate this. What's the limit as n goes to infinity of n over n plus 1? 1, right? We we're looking at some of those limits last time. Right. Is the number one a convergent amount? No. Yes. 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 Now, what does divergent mean to us? It's no amount. No amount or infinite. I can't. It's not a finite value. Remember that. So, divergent could be uh, something that oscillates, infinite, negative infinity, does not exist, undefined. That's a divergent. This is actually converging. It went to some finite value. Okay, it went to that one. So this is telling me that this converges. So that means that this converges. And your work is the proof of it. Your work's, hey, I'm showing this. Partial sums. I can get an nth term representation. What's going on there? That tells me this guy. The different one. Let's go sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n. Let's look at the first one. negative one, right? Mm -hmm. Do you agree with that? Mm -hmm. All right. Let's look at the second one. Negative one plus one. Zero. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the third one. Negative one plus one plus negative one. Negative one. See a pattern? 
bouncing back and forth, right? It's going to diverge, but it's either going to be negative 1 or 0. Everybody agree? Yeah. Okay. So I can actually write the nth term, S sub n is either negative 1 or 0, and it'd be negative 1 if n is odd. It'll be 0 if n is even. You start seeing that. So I can write a general term for it. This is enough to tell me this thing diverges. Because it's just going to keep bouncing back and forth. So this is one of those oscillating kind of things. It's not infinite. It's not negative infinity or anything like that. It, it, you can say it doesn't exist because you can't actually do it. Okay? But it really just depends on what term you're stopping on. And so then the question comes in, well, if you think about infinity, is infinity even or odd? I don't know. If you think it's even, add one to it. Then it's odd, and it's still infinity. Right? So that's why we say diverges. I can't tell what it is. Right? Now, if you were paying attention from before, that's geometric. Yeah. <laughs> so you have some that can. You can use multiple kinds of tests on it. That would be geometric because that absolute value is going to be oh, a 1. My goodness. Everybody okay there? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to see some that you can use multiple things on to determine. And in the end, I'll tell you right now, in the end, after we go through all these different tests over these days, when you take the test on this, here's the problem. Converge, diverge, why? You're going to pick your test you're going to do on it. Sometimes you'll have one only one test works, or sometimes you might have one that three different ones work, whichever one you want. Okay? So we're going to go through and kind of work with the different ones. Here's our last one for the day. So we're going to go, let's see, nth term test. For divergence. All right, nth term test for divergence. If the sum of a sub n from n equals 1 to infinity, I always put n equals 1 a lot of times, remember it really doesn't matter. It's an infinite series. Okay? The top one's what matters. If this converges, Then the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n equals zero. If the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n does not equal zero, then the sum as n goes from one to infinity of a sub n diverges. The key is going to be that last statement. Pay very close attention to the title of this test. It's the nth term test for divergence. That means it cannot tell convergence. It's testing divergence. It proves divergence or it proves nothing. Okay with that? We have to be really careful here on an if-then statement. Okay. This says if the, the sum converges, then the limit's zero. It does not say if the limit's zero, then it converges. Remember your old if-then statements from years ago? Hey, if it's raining, then it's cloudy. If it's cloudy, then it's raining. Converse is not always true. Okay. If it's Saturday, then there's no school. If there's no school, then it's Saturday. No, not necessarily. Remember those old statements? Mm -hmm. That's your kind of thing. So these are reading the way they are. If it converges, the limit's zero. If the limit's not zero, it diverges. This guy's the key right here. 
Let's take a look at these. Sum. N goes from 1 to infinity. 1 minus 1 half to the n. If I'm using the nth term test, again, this should look geometric there. We kind of see that. But for practicing the nth term test, right, the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 minus 1 half to the n, what does that equal? One, because this is going to go to zero, right? Yeah. You're going to have one over infinity. It's going to approach zero, right? So this is one. Right? One is not zero. So it diverges. Now, if you're thinking back to that <coughs> geometric idea, you see that one half and you're going, wait a minute. That should converge because that's a half. I get that, but this part diverges. You have a divergent plus or minus a convergent still diverging. Once you're gone, you're gone. <laughs> Be the idea. So a minute ago, a few minutes ago, we added two geometrics and both parts converged. We got a value. And I said if either one of those diverged, the whole thing would diverge. So even though this is a convergent little piece here geometrically, that's not. So it's throwing it off. Let's go sum as n goes from 0 to infinity. 2 to the n. Check my limit. 2 to the n. What is 2 to the infinity equal? Infinity. All right. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty sure infinity is not zero. <laughs> Diverges. <laughs> n goes from 1 to infinity, 1 over n. Check our limit. Uh, 1 over n. All right, what's that limit? What's 1 over infinity? Zero. Zero. Zero is zero. Not not zero, right? Okay. Nth term test does not work. Wasted time. <laughs> Try another test. You lose. Huh? And term test is usually one of the ones that I'll try most often first because I can do the limit pretty quick. Right? But unfortunately, a lot of them are going to give me a limit value of zero, and if that happens, I'm going to something else. Okay? But I will try it first a lot of times just because it's quick. And if it doesn't work, I've got to go back to some other piece. And we'll have a lot of different tests that we go through. Okay. So we got three today. Well, this was a repeat. You saw this one already, okay? So really two new ones. I'll work on getting down because we'll add a couple more next time. So basically just trying to prove that it's